Hello folks, my name is Tim and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be combining our Raspberry Pi Pico here with this teeny little ESP01 module in order to make this thing do wireless communication. We're gonna basically Wi-Fi enable our Pico. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have our by now familiar Raspberry Pi Pico, but we also have this little ESP01 board. Now, these modules are a very popular choice when looking to add Wi-Fi connectivity to a project that otherwise doesn't have it. The module features a built-in Wi-Fi radio, and you can see the zigzagging antenna at the top of the board here. Now, as its firmware includes a full Wi-Fi and TCP IP stack, it's able to connect to a wireless network just like any typical laptop, phone or similar device, making these things very, very useful. Now, of course, this is a microcontroller in its own right, and it's running the ESP8266 microprocessor. And you can absolutely use these things as standalone controllers, but let's take a look at the I.O. pins we have here. So we have eight pins arranged in two rows, one above the other, which of course means this is not a breadboard friendly module, but never mind. I'm just using this breadboard here to hold this physically in place rather than to connect it to anything. So, beginning with the first pin, that's the first pin on the top row with the antenna of the board facing towards me, we have the VCC or voltage in pin, and that expects a 3.3 volt supply. Now, this is an important point with these ESP01 boards. They are 3.3 volt devices and they do not include any voltage regulators. So that means if you use this with a five volt device, like the Arduino, for example, then you must use a logic level shifter or a voltage divider or regulator or some sort of similar protection method because this is not a five volt tolerant board and it's pretty easily damaged. Okay, so the next pin along we have here, the second pin on the top row, this is the reset pin and that's followed by the chip enable pin. And these are used for chip control and triggering firmware uploads. Finally, we encounter our first GPIO pin. That's the fourth pin on the top row here. Well, okay, it's actually the second GPIO pin as far as the breakout of this chip is concerned, but it's the first one we've encountered. So that's GPIO pin one, and it's also the UART transmission pin. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So on the bottom row here, we have the first pin, and that's the UART receive pin, followed by GPIO pin zero, then GPIO pin two, and finally we have a ground pin. And that's it. That's all you get. And it's not really a lot of IO to play with. So given the limitations of the ESP01, it's best coupled with another device that offers a bit more flexibility. And today we're gonna to be combining ours with the Pico here. Now, of course, you can get more capable ESP modules. There's such things as an ESP02 and an ESP07, and various other ones as well. And they basically all feature the same ESP8266 chip, but with more of the IO broken out. And if that's enough for your project, then you won't need to combine it with anything else. You can just use the module directly. Finally, there's also the beefier ESP32 controllers, but if you're using one of those, then you're likely basing your entire project around it, and you probably won't be using a Pico. So how do we actually work with an ESP01 module then? Well, out of the factory, this thing comes preloaded with some firmware that will accept AT commands. And those are commands that you can send to the chip to tell it what Wi-Fi network to connect to, what mode of operation to run in, and provide any details like Wi-Fi passwords. Now, we're not actually gonna be using that today. We're gonna to be taking advantage of the fact that this can actually be programmed and you can flash your own firmware onto it. So, how do you program it? Well, there are a number of ways of doing it, but by far the easiest is to use one of these 
dedicated ESP01 programming boards. So you just connect the ESP01 into the little socket at the top here. And in the case of this programmer, the correct orientation is to have the board folded back on itself. So the antenna end is pointing toward the USB plug here. And then on the side of the board, we just have this little switch. And this toggles between the standard UART mode and the programming mode. So you just flick the switch over and that puts the board into programming mode. Now this is accomplished by pulling the chip enable pin high and pushing GPIO pin zero low. And that triggers the bootloader upload state of the ESP01. And at that point, we can send new firmware to this thing that it'll run. So let's take a look at how you do that. Okay, now for the software side of things. In order to program the ESP01, we're gonna be using the Arduino IDE. Now this will be familiar to anyone who's interested in this sort of thing because the Arduino IDE is pretty ubiquitous. However, we do need to make sure that we're running a recent version of the IDE. Now I use the Raspberry Pi 4 as my development machine for doing this kind of thing. And unfortunately, the version that comes with the Raspberry Pi by default is actually quite old. So I've gone ahead and downloaded a newer version from the Arduino website. Once the IDE is installed, however, we need to add support for the ESP01 module. And in fact, the entire family of ESP8266 boards. To do that, you just go to File, Preferences, and in the pop-up that's presented, you need to find the additional boards manager URLs. Click the little button next to it and add the URL that you see here into this box. And again, I'll leave this URL in the description for anyone who needs it. Basically, this is telling the Arduino IDE where it needs to go to download all of the support packages and bits and pieces it needs to work with ESP8266 boards. So the next thing is to go to our boards manager and install those support packages. So under tools, go to board and then boards manager. And that opens this boards manager pop up here. So in the top, we just want to search for ESP. And there we are. You should see a section for ESP8266. Now, in my case, I've already installed this package, but if you've only just added the extension to the IDE, then you'll need to go ahead and click the install button that should show up where I have this little remove button here. And once that installation is finished, you should now have everything you need to work with the ESP01. Okay, so as is tradition with these sorts of things, we'll begin by loading up a simple blink sketch just to test that our programmer is working and everything's doing what it should do. So if you go to File, Examples, and then under the Examples for Generic ESP8266 Module section, you'll find an ESP8266 section. And under there, we have our Blink Sketch. So as you can see, this is a very simple program, and all it does is to flash the onboard LED of the ESP01 module. So let's connect our programmer and get this software running. All right, so first thing we need to do is to take our little programmer here and make sure that the little switch on the side is in programming mode. And with that completed, we can just connect it to a USB port. So there we are, and that should be all there is needed to program it. So back in our IDE here, now we just hit the upload button and you'll see some messages about compiling and then uploading. And finally, you'll see this message here, hard resetting via RTS pin. Now that's the final message that gets printed out from one of these flashing operations. So once you see that, you know you're done. So. Now we need to take our ESP01, disconnect the board from the USB port, switch the little programmer back into the regular UART mode and reconnect it. Now if all went well, we should... Ah yes, there we go. So we have our little blinking LED. So that's all worked exactly as we expected it to. We've proven we can actually load custom firmware onto this thing and make it do stuff. So let's make it do Wi-Fi stuff.
So to make it connect to a wireless network, we're again going to use one of the example sketches that comes with the ESP8826 support package. Now, this time we're going to go to ESP8266 Wi-Fi, and under the sub-menu we're going to find the Wi-Fi client example. Okay, so this obviously looks like a much more substantial program than the previous one, but there's not that much we actually need to do here. By default, this is designed to connect to this djxmmx.net server on port number 17, and this is actually a quote of the day server. So all that will happen is when we connect, it will respond with a text caption, a snippet, a little quote that this program will then print out over the serial interface. So first thing we're going to need to do is to modify our SSID up here to the SSID of our wireless network and then provide our password. So I'm going to do that off camera, obviously, but really that's all you need to do to make this program work. Okay, so with that modification made, it's time to flash this to the ESP01 and see if we can actually connect to the internet with this. So I'll just disconnect our programmer again. We'll put it back into programming mode, reconnect it, and then we can use the upload button again to upload this new sketch. Okay, so there's our hard resetting message, so that means the upload has completed. Now, before I reconnect the ESP01 module, I'm going to open our little serial monitor here, because we'll be able to see what happens when the board powers up, and hopefully we should start to see some quotes coming back from that server. Okay, so the board is booting up, and ah, lovely, there we are, we've got a Wi-Fi connection, and we have an IP address. Brilliant. Let's see if we get back a quote. <laughs> well, OK, connection failed, but that could be simply because the server at the other end is overloaded. Ah, yes, there we go. Excellent. So there we have a lovely quote by George Bernard Shaw, apparently. But that proves that the ESP01 is able to run our custom firmware, that it's able to connect to our wireless network, and finally that it's able to reach out over the internet and contact a remote server. Brilliant! So at this point, it's time to bring in our Raspberry Pi Pico and combine these two boards. Alright, well that's got everything wired up, and as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. Because the Raspberry Pi Pico is a 33 volt logic level board anyway, I haven't had to worry about adding any voltage protection before wiring it directly up to the ESP01 here. It's perfectly safe to do that because it's all running 3.3 volts. However, I have had to add this external power jack, and that's because when I tried to power the ESP01 using the Raspberry Pi Pico's 3.3 volt output pin, it didn't work. And I think that's because the ESP01 here, being a transmitter, required more current than the Pico could provide. So no matter, we'll just use an external supply. So the power circuitry here is very simple. We just have the 3.3 volt supply line going into the appropriate pin of our ESP01, and we have a ground line coming back. And of course, we also have a ground line from one of the pins on our Pico here to give these boards a common ground connection. Now, to communicate between the ESP01 and the Pico, we're going to use one of the Pico's two UART interfaces. And there's that name again. UART. Well, we've mentioned it a few times already, but what is it? Well, UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, and basically it's a time-based serial communication protocol used to send data between connected devices. It's an old and very simple mechanism that works by pushing bits out over a single wire connected between a transmission or TX pin on one device and a receiving or RX pin on the other. 
And if you want two-way communication, you need to add a second wire running between a second set of RX and TX pins, but wired the other way around. Now, being as it's time-based, the speed or board rate of the UART needs to be agreed on by both sides, so they know how quickly to pull their input pins for fresh data. And we'll look at how that's set up in software in just a moment. Now, for the Raspberry Pi Pico here, the first UART interface is broken out onto GPIO pin 0 and GPIO pin 1. So, pin 0 here, that's the blue wire, is the UART transmit or TX pin, and that is, of course, wired back all the way to the receiver or RX pin of the ESP01. And the green wire here, well, that just goes from the transmit pin of the ESP01 here all the way back to the UART RX or receiver pin of the Pico, and that is GPIO pin 1. So there we are. That's all there is to wiring this thing up. Let's take a look at the software that we're going to load onto our Pico here. All right, so here we are on my Raspberry Pi 4 desktop again, and I've loaded up the source code to a very simple little micro Python program that's going to be running on our Raspberry Pi Pico here. So let's take a look at how it works. Initially, we need to import some modules, particularly the UART module, because that's the interface we're going to be using. And here we build ourselves a little UART0 object. So to do that, we make a call to the UART module and we basically say we'd like to use zero. That's the first interface of the two UART interfaces provided by the Pico. We provide the board rate. Now, if you remember, I said that the board rate needs to be synchronized between both halves of the communication in order for it to work. So here we're setting the board rate to 115,200. And in this program here, this is just the... Wi-Fi client demo program that we've already loaded onto our ESP01. You can see here a matching serial.begin statement using the same 115,200 board speed. So basically these two components should be synchronized and able to talk to each other. Right, so back on the Pico side, we now need to tell it the TX pin we're using, and that's GPIO pin 0, and the RX pin we're using, that is GPIO pin 1. And that's all there is to setting up a little UART interface. So, once we've done that, we dive into this loop here, and that's just an infinite loop that's going to keep on looping round and round and round, polling the interface to see if there's any data we should be reading. Now, if there is data, and that's detected here on line 8, this UART0.any method, that'll tell us, do we have any data, basically? Well, if we do, we dive into an inner loop here that simply reads all of the data from the UART piece at a time and stores it into our bytes array. So once we're done with that, we then come to this statement here that simply says, if len rx data, i.e. if there is any data available to us, then just print it out. So there you are, that's all the program does. In a nutshell, it basically reads all the data that comes in on the UART and then prints it out before looping back around and doing it again. So on the other end of our UART connection, of course, we have our ESP01. So coming over to this program over here, well, we're just using the same Wi-Fi client demo program that we've already prepared. So what's going to happen here is the ESP01 will connect to my local Wi-Fi network. It will reach out over the internet to this DJX MMX server, retrieve a quotation from it, and then print that out over the serial interface. But this is in fact the UART interface. So when that data gets printed, it's going to be received by the Raspberry Pi Pico over here, which will in fact print it out itself. So the net result of this is going to be that the quotation we see coming back will be printed in our micro Python shell here, rather than in the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. So let's give it a go and see if it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is to run the MicroPython program here. 
Okay, so there we are, that's running. And now I'm gonna provide the 3.3 volt power for our ESP01 from my benchtop supply. Aha! Okay, oh, look at that. Right, so that's worked. So you can see we've got some binary stuff coming back here, which is just basically printing gibberish, but we can ignore that for now. But the important part is this bit here. So now we can see we've connected to my local Wi-Fi network here. We've retrieved the IP address. We've connected to the DJX MMX server. And here we have our quotation data. Brilliant. So that worked exactly as we had hoped. As entertaining as these quotes may be, they're not very useful. However, it's not much of a stretch to imagine streaming movement commands from a remote control server and having the Pico move some connected motors accordingly. Or maybe attaching a sensor to the Pico and streaming that data back to some visualization platform like Grafana. You could even hook up a screen to the Pico and get it to display messages pulled from the Twitter API or something similar. There's loads of potential here and I would love to hear about your ideas, so feel free to leave a comment below. Anyway, I hope that this has been interesting and thank you for watching.